Hey, look what I picked up today. This is the iPhone 14 Pro. Now, this isn't a thought review video, but this is a look at the video capabilities of the brand new phone. I took it out for the whole weekend, so this is a summary of all of those photos and videos. So what you're watching now is the Sony a7S III, but the rest of this video will all be shot on the iPhone 14 Pro. So, let's go. facing selfie camera because let's be honest this is one of the worst cameras on an iPhone but it's one of the cameras we use the most you know a lot of people take selfies they'll do vlogs like I'm doing right now talking to this camera so it's always been a shame I felt that the quality has been in the past quite poor and this camera's had a big upgrade this year so it's now 12 megapixel and it's got autofocus for the first time so what do you think of the quality of this I mean what I tend to do if I'm filming a vlog from my iPhone I'll actually turn the camera around and try and use the the back camera but maybe I can now use the front facing camera if I'm trying to do videos the Sun is very harsh here behind me so you can see that facing me I'll just spin around actually so you can see uh, that's with the Sun directly behind me image quality looks quite good here on the screen but let me know and then that's with the Sun to my right then the sun blaring at me so that's the quality of the front facing selfie camera now of course they've added cinematic mode so let's take a look at that on this front facing camera okay so this is cinematic mode on the front facing camera it should be a little bit better now with that 12 megapixel camera but how does it look again I'll spin around the Sun's facing me right now and then I'll spin around with the Sun to my back how is it cutting me out it always did a fairly poor job before I felt, but uh, with good sunlight, what's it like? Let me know, would you use cinematic mode on the front facing selfie camera? And just for reference, I've actually got my iPhone 13 Pro, so let's test out the front facing camera on that so you can judge the difference. Okay, so this is the front facing camera on the iPhone 13 Pro. Obviously not as uh, quite a high megapixel count as the 14 Pro. What do you think? Can you see a big difference? Now we've jumped back to the older 13 Pro love to know um, what I'm noticing on screen it does look a lot softer and that's what I've always noticed again let's do the spin around suns on my face suns now directly behind me and um, you know it looks okay it's a very nice day today but it always looks a little bit washed out let's try the cinematic mode this is the cinematic mode on the front facing camera of the iPhone 13 Pro. Just looking on the screen, it looks like it's cut out a little bit worse. I guess it's got less to play with. Again, let's face the sun, very bright there. And let's have the sun directly behind me. What do you think? Cinematic mode on the iPhone 13 Pro. Now let's do a side by side comparison. Now this is the cinematic mode on both cameras. This is the iPhone 14 Pro cinematic mode. How's it cutting me out with the selfie camera? And this is the iPhone 13 Pro. What do you think? Let's get the sun right in front of me. Very, very bright, hard to look at. And then let's get the sun directly behind us. What do we think? I can see on the screen, the 14 Pro does look a lot brighter. I think it's doing a better job at cutting my hair out as well. You can see my hair's a bit douchey today. What do you think? Cinematic mode on the selfie cameras, with the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro. Now, whilst we're kind of vlogging, I thought I would turn the camera around and use the one-time zoom on the back of the iPhone. And to be honest, this is what I'll actually use if I am doing vlogging, just because the quality of this camera is much higher quality than the front-facing selfie camera. Now, of course, the selfie camera's been vastly improved this year, so maybe I won't need to do that anymore. But what I've noticed is the stabilization this year is up another level. It does look extremely stable in the shots that I've done so far. Obviously, I can't see this one now because I'm recording it. Um, and what else I've noticed is the background blur is a little bit better as well. I think because it's got a bigger image sensor, it can let in a lot more light. Um, I think it's just helping with the 
with the background blur. So it's actually looking like a really good camera. I like to have a Sony ZV-1 or another type of camera with me for, for these type of vlogs, but actually maybe the iPhone 14 Pro now can do away with all my sort of point and shoot cameras, you know. What do you think? Let me know if the uh, image quality coming out of the one times rear camera on the iPhone 14 Pro. Okay, whilst we're in vlogging mode, I thought I would try this out and I never normally do this. This is now the ultra wide camera on the back of the iPhone. And I would never normally use this to vlog because the quality in the past has been extremely poor. Now, I'm in quite a shaded area, I'm behind some trees, but it's quite a nice bright day. So how does this look? I mean, the stabilization is very good on the ultra wide uh, and the image quality has been improved. So could this be an option? The good thing about this is because it is so wide, it's much easier to frame yourself. And of course you get to see more of the background when you're doing a bit of vlogging. So this will look a little bit more like a GoPro, um, a little bit kind of fisheye looking when you get to the edge of the frame. But uh, let me know, could this be an option for vlogging? And just for reference, let's switch to the iPhone 13 Pro's ultra wide. Okay, so now we're on the ultra wide of the iPhone 13 Pro. How does this look? Uh, before it was always a little bit mushy, always a little bit poor in low light. I always loved this camera, but uh, or this lens, sorry, but um, could it be used for vlogging? I think 13 Pro and below, possibly not, because in low light, I'm out going under a tree, it would get a little bit on the mushy side and uh, it didn't look that good. Apologies, by the way, it's a little bit windy today and I'm just recording on the iPhone's internal microphones, which are usually pretty good. But let me know again, what you think of the audio quality as I flip between these two phones? Ooh, very breezy now. But again, this is the ultra wide on the iPhone 13 Pro. So let's take a look at some of these focal lengths. This is the 0.5 ultra wide, then we go to the one times wide, and then this new two times wide view, and then the three times view. So you now have four focal lengths or zooms you can use for the iPhone 14 Pro. So there's one feature I wanna try, and it's the action mode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run down this hill as fast as I can, and we're gonna see how good the action mode is. I'm not gonna try and keep the camera steady, so let's give it a go. Let's run to the bottom. Now I'm really shaking here. On the screen it looks terrible. So how will this come out? Now, so you can get a better example of how shaky this actually was. I recreated this walking down the canal. Look how much I'm shaking this camera, the iPhone. And look at the footage. Look how it comes out on the right hand side. It's just incredible. Now, as I'm editing, one thing I really noticed was how stable this footage actually looks. And just bear in mind, this is all handheld. I'm not using a gimbal of any kind. I haven't stabilized this or color corrected it in Final Cut. This is just straight out of camera. Now, one thing I strongly recommend you getting if you're filming on an iPhone 13 or 14 is get a MagSafe adapter like this one from Moment because you can just simply slap it against your tripod and it will magnetically attach. All you need to make sure if you do want to use a case, just make sure you get a MagSafe case like this buckle and band leather case with MagSafe included. I'll put a link in the description to both of these below. So as we continue to watch this footage together, one thing I want to point out is that, again, this is all handheld. It's straight out of camera, so I haven't color corrected this at all. This is just how the colors look straight out of camera, which is really impressive. If you want to do some editing and you don't want to waste your time color grading, you really don't have to. The colors coming out of the iPhone 14 Pro are really, really good. But because it can film in 10-bit, 
you can color grade it too and it actually color grades really really well I'm gonna do a future video showing you how I color grade and use LUTs with some of my iPhone footage so make sure to subscribe if you want to see that future video Okay, so let's test out this cinematic mode. This is cinematic mode on the iPhone 14 Pro. What do we think? It's now in 4K 25 frames a second and it's available in 24 frames and 30 frames a second. And that was the major problem I had with the previous version of the cinematic mode on the iPhone 13 Pro was that you could only have it in 30 frames a second, which is really no good for us here in Europe and it was only in 1080p HD. So what do you think of this quality? Let me know. What's the uh, background separation like? But anyway, let's actually, for reference, put the iPhone 13 back on so you can see what it's like. So this is cinematic mode on the iPhone 13 Pro. As mentioned, it's only in 30 frames a second and it's in uh, 1080p HD. So the quality should be a lot lower, about four times lower. But let me know, what's the separation like in the back? Is it cutting my hair out okay? What's the highlights and lowlights like? What do we think? trying out the cinematic mode on the front facing camera. Let's just get behind this bush. How's the cutout? So by the way, I'm walking around the RHS Bridgewater, which is in Worsley in Manchester, if you ever fancy taking a visit, but I thought it'd be a great place to uh, experiment with the iPhone with all these colors and, and sort of beautiful flowers about. So just in case you wondered where I was. So it's definitely worth a visit here if you've never been here before. Even if you're not really into plants, it's just quite a relaxing, nice place to be. It smells so nice. Um, there's a couple of cafes here, places to chill. Just a nice place to unwind actually, and it's not too far from where I live, so I can actually walk here, so it's not too, not too bad, but it's nice when you get a beautiful day, especially uh, during summer or autumn like it is today. A little bit chilly this morning, but nice now. So let's continue the adventure. So we're back in cinematic mode. I think that's my time here nearly done. So I'm gonna go back, edit this video, and look back at some of the footage to see what I think. And I'll give you kind of my roundup as I'm editing the video together. But right now, I'm in cinematic mode. Oh, one thing about cinematic mode, actually, I tend to dial it down. It always starts with like F1.8 or F2, or 2.8, I think. Um, so I always dial it back to about five or six to get it looking a bit more natural. Um, I'll do it now, actually, so. Let's turn it up as high as it will go to, I think, I think it's 2.8 on this phone, I'm not 100% sure. So as you can see, the background is super blurry, but probably what's happening, because I'm editing this, is uh, it cuts out the hair quite badly. Now what we're gonna do is turn it to F maybe six, maybe seven, and has that improved it? Does it look a little bit more natural? A little bit less blur, but you don't see some of the problems with the, with the cutouts that you often get with the uh, cinematic mode. Now, one problem with cinematic mode is you still really can't use it for objects like this. I'm trying to focus on this plant here, and it looks like it's focused, but I imagine as this plant is moving in the wind, it's probably going out of focus, as we can see there, it's gone completely out of focus. So 
you do have to be very selective with the cinematic mode to get it really looking good. I wouldn't use it for every single shot, maybe for just subjects like yourself or a friend um, or still objects. But I think with anything moving, it doesn't really do a great job. That was quite nice. It seems to be locking focus on the plant, but as it moves around, the, the cut, the cutting out of it in, uh, in the AI in the back end may not do a good job or you'll end up with kind of artifacts everywhere. So here's a quick look at some of the low light performance coming out of the iPhone 14 Pro. Overall, I'm pretty impressed. It's not hugely different from the 13 Pro as you'll see, but you do get a little bit of reduced noise, especially on that ultra wide camera. And that's a camera that I tend to use a lot when I use the iPhone 14. I'm gonna put up a video in a few weeks time doing more low light tests and more photography. If you wanna see that video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So I thought I'd jump in here. I'm currently editing the video you're watching and I'm looking at a lot of the side-by-side -side footage of the 13 Pro versus the 14 Pro. So I want to give you my opinion. So first of all, I've got to say I'm slightly disappointed because the footage isn't the giant leap that I thought it would be, even in low light. Um, and it's not to say that's a bad thing. I mean, the 13 Pro was the best camera I've ever had in a smartphone. The bar was so high. So I thought the 14 Pro would be a huge leap again. And it's, you know, it is better. The selfie camera is definitely better. The ultra wide is definitely better, which is a really, really good thing. But everything else, I think if you're looking at the, the colors and everything, it's quite hard to tell. You know, it's not the, the giant leap anymore. It's like these little slight improvements, which is fantastic. It's always good to get better and better. So what I would say is if you're coming from an Android phone other than the latest Samsung, you're gonna see a huge difference. If you're coming from, an iPhone 11 or below, you're gonna see a huge difference. But if you're coming from an iPhone 13 Pro, I'm not quite sure if it's yet worth the upgrade, unless you use the ultra wide a lot and the selfie camera a lot, because there are some big improvements there. Um, but you know, I'm not unimpressed. I'm just not completely blown away, if that makes sense. But overall, I'm super happy with the iPhone 14 Pro. Um, would I upgrade from the 13 Pro? A Again, probably not. I wouldn't recommend you to do that. The iPhone 13 Pro is fantastic and you can probably get it at a good deal now. And the only downside I'm having with my iPhone 14 Pro is the battery life. It seems a lot, lot worse than the 13 Pro. And um, I'm seeing this sort of spring up online a lot. It's been about three or four days, so the phone's fully indexed, all apps are up to date, and iOS is fully up to date. But uh, usually at the end of the day with my 13 Pro, with filming, I was filming obviously the same stuff. I got home and I had about 50% left. The iPhone 14 Pro had 10% left. So it seems pretty bad. And today I haven't filmed at all apart from what I'm doing now. And it's still dropping below 50% at 4 p.m. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Maybe I've got a faulty phone, but I'm gonna keep an eye on that. But let me know in the comment section below, what did you think of all this footage? I hope this helped if you're trying to make a decision at the moment about whether you should upgrade or get the phone. Again, it's a fantastic quality. I don't think you can get better quality from a phone than you can with the iPhone 14 Pro. I think it's actually better than going for something like a Sony ZV-1 because you can get 10 bit, it's so stable, you can edit the footage, you've got all the focal lengths. The iPhone, chef's kiss, it's fantastic.